good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, the second speech of the President of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian, at the 47th meeting of the Intergovernmental Committee on Intellectual Property, Genetic Resources, Traditional Knowledge and Folklore, Sons of Western Armenia, Vahagana Satarian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, Hakop Hakopian, the people of Artsakh must realize that they cannot use the past. It should not be just for that Artsakh cannot be part of Azerbaijan. The people of Artsakh are deprived of the right to health, work and freedom of movement. Minister speech in Geneva. The international community should put pressure on Baku to stop the threats of genocide against Armenia and Artsakh. Alexander Tamanyan tried to save the Church of St. Paul and Peter in Yerevan. Assembly of Armenians of Western Armenia, Speech 2, from 5 to 9 June 2023. Madam President, dear delegates of the member states, our delegation supports the facilitator's variant, but there is one point we would like to understand. Indigenous people have worked for more than 50 years to get the member states to adopt a declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples and their right to self-determination. In the preamble to our instruments, point 1, this same declaration is seated and specified but through aspirations. It is mechanically extended to local communities. This means that we now find ourselves in a situation where local communities have a status equivalent to that of indigenous peoples, both in terms of beneficiaries and in terms of the scope of protection. Is there a legal text approved by member states on the status of local communities? Thank you, Madam President. Colonel Vahagan Asatarian, the national hero of the Republic of Armenia, chose his military path and remained faithful to his chosen cause throughout his life. His uncle, General Astvatsatur Petrosian, played a big role in this choice of his past, which began with the hero's military baptism. Vahagan's mother, Mrs. Sima, participated in the professional selection of her son. Vahagan Asatarian graduated from five military universities. He commenced his military training in 1994 at Montemelkonia Military College. After graduating from from the college in 1997, he embarked on a long-term service in Armenian army. He contributed to the building of the army by assuming many responsible positions in various military units. From 2050 to 2017, he served as the commander of the military unit named after Marshal Bagramian and the commander of the Armavir garrison. Between 2017 and 2020, he held the position of commander in the Special Purpose Military Unit of the EC Armed Forces. In 2020, he participated in the Artsakh War as the commander of the special forces. On September 27, the first day of the war, Vahagan Asatarian, along with the unit under his leadership, was deployed to the Shahumyan region of the Republic of Artsakh. In early October, under Asatarian's command, his unit successfully recaptured the strategic chain's position in the Shahumyan region using a well-developed strategy. Asatarian and his unit then moved from the Shahumyan district to the village of Jirakan in the Hadru district of the Republic of Artsakh, engaging in a fierce battles against the enemy. During the ongoing combat operations, in the Hadrut region, Jirakan, units of Azerbaijani armed forces conducted searches for Vahagana Satarian along the entire front line, as reported by his deputy Arthur Musaylian. Radio reconnaissance data indicated that the Azerbaijani armed forces had instructions to bomb Satarian's location as soon as he was detected. Despite the intense fighting in and around the city of Hadrut, Satarian continued to lead his special purpose unit. Unfortunately, on October 12, Vahagana Satarian was killed as a result of a missile strike launched by Azerbaijani armed forces while defending the city of Hadrut. The Khachkar monument is one of the most characteristic symbols of Armenian identity, a product and sign of the unique development of Armenian culture. With its magnificent reliefs, the sacred meaning of the cross and the eternity inspiring permanence of the stone, it has become one of the sacred values of the Armenian people. It is an object of worship, a memorial stone symbolizing the connection between earth and divine life. In this center of the Khachkar monument is carved a cross with an average height of 2 meters and at the bottom of sun symbolizing eternity. The largest complex of Armenian Khachkar monuments is located in the city of Juha in Nakhijevan. The Juha Khachkars are one of the lasting and unique treasures and monuments of the sculptural treasury created by mankind, coming from the deep roots of the centuries-old art created by the Armenian people. The art of the monuments of the Khachkars of Juha, their full subject matter, are eloquent and visual documents of the medieval cultural life of the Armenian people. Due to the accurate reproduction of the historical reality of the past, this 
scarf treasure reproduced with high artistic skill provides an important and irreplaceable material not only for the study of sculpture but also for the study of urban life and everyday life of medieval Armenian. One 20th century European scholar rightly noted, there are several thousand crosses here. Each cross could be a rare exhibit of the most famous museum. In Europe, they like to evaluate every museum exhibit, but all the millionaires of Europe can enter the Khachkar forest of Old Juga and come out bankrupt, almost without damaging it. The recent decision by Artsakh President Arai Karuchunyan has sparked dissatisfaction among Artsakh political and social circles. A few days ago, the Artsakh Information Center reported that people were relocating from the Republic of Armenia to Artsakh and vice versa. This behavior of the authorities has caused resentment in Artsakh opposition circles, who are demanding explanations from the authorities. Hako Pakopian, the leader of the opposition party, stated, This decision is noting short of crossing a red line. We have consistently emphasized emphasizing that Artsakh must maintain an uninterrupted, unobstructed land connection with Armenia. This is a red line for us, and today that line has been crossed. He emphasized the unacceptability of the situation and added, the people of Artsakh need to understand that even if the authorities facilitate transportation for passengers, they will not be able to use that route. This issue requires the collective will of both the Artsakh authorities and the entire population, as it is not enough to simply state that Artsakh cannot be part of Azerbaijan. Budget. We are often asked what measures should be taken to prevent this, and now we are saying that you should not take that pass. The government of Western Armenia welcomes the position of Hakop Hakopian, head of Artsakh Artarutun opposition party. We constantly emphasize the rights of the indigenous population on all political and governmental platforms. During the session of the UN Intergovernmental Committee on Intellectual Property, Genetic Resources, Traditional Knowledge, and Folklore held in Geneva from June 5 to 9, 2020, President of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian, delivered two speeches addressing the rights and cultural heritage of indigenous peoples. You can find the speeches on our website. We believe that the resilient compatriots of Artsakh understand the significance of their indigenous identity and are prepared to defend their rights. True to its adopted values, Armenia continues to make the necessary efforts and allocate resources to implement essential reforms. Narek Makarchian, the Armenian Minister of Labor and Social Affairs, highlighted this during his speech at the 111th session of the International Labor Conference in Geneva. He also emphasized the significance of decent work in achieving the goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Noting the successful implementation of the decent work program in Armenia from 2000. 2019 to 2023. However, the head of the Armenian delegation pointed out that armed conflicts continue to pose a significant obstacle to these efforts. Azerbaijan aggression against the people of Artsakh and the sovereign territory of Armenia, as well as the ongoing blockade of the 120,000 strong population of Artsakh for more than six months, hinder the protection of fundamental human rights. The people of Artsakh are deprived of their rights to health, labor, and freedom of movement, which contradicts accepted international norms the minister stated. Narek Makarchan also commended Armenian's 31-year collaboration with the international labor organizations and emphasized that the ILAO has been and remains a reliable partner for the country, particularly in the strengthening social justice, ensuring occupational safety and health. The official expressed hope that the collective work and joint efforts of all ILO members will enable the resolution of existing challenges, ensuring social justice, decent work and well-being. The Lemkin Institute for the Prevention of Genocide has issued a statement urging the international community to exert pressure on Baku to halt the genocidal threats against Armenia and Artsakh. Here are excerpts from the statement dated May 30. The Lemkin Institute for the Prevention of Genocide expresses deep concern regarding the apparent oversight of international negotiators engaged in peace talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan. We call upon international actors, particularly U.S. President Biden, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to acknowledge the genocide against Armenian Street in the South Caucasus. Furthermore, we implore them to consider the repercussions of disregarding the existing early warning systems and protocols established to prevent genocide, as well as rewarding President Ilham Aliyev of Azerbaijan for his threats against Armenia. This spring, we have seen intensified efforts to finalize an internationally mediated peace agreement between Armenia and Baku. The details 
course of these negotiations clearly involve huge concessions by Armenia to Azerbaijan, such as ceding the historically Armenian territory of Artsakh, with little things other than paper guarantees offered in return. The institute insists once again that the prevention of the genocide against Armenians must be a top priority. The government of Western Armenia welcomes the statements issued by the Lemkin Institute for the Prevention of Genocide, which we have repeatedly stated and continue to voice from the UN Rostrum. Absence of punitive measures against the genocidal policy of the Turkish and Baku authorities will lead to new genocides not only against the Armenian people but against everyone without exception. Understanding this, Lemkin Institute consistently raises this issue, calling to put pressure on Baku authorities. After the Sovietization of Armenia during the years of Stalin's anti-religious propaganda and repression, numerous churches in Yerevan and several other settlements in eastern Armenia were destroyed. In 1931, the Yerevan Political Council also made a decision to demolish the St. Pogos Petros church located in the city center with plans to construct a cinema building in its place. The Pogos Petros church in Yerevan dates back to 17th century, but few people know during the demolition of the church traces of an older church were found at the base of the building and under the layers of mural paintings depicting older frescoes, so we can assume that the church was built earlier. In the 1920s to 1930s, during the demolition of the church, the discovery of frescoes preserved beneath the foundations caused a significant commotion among experts. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song.